OK, good afternoon. Good morning, I should say. I've already ruined it. Um, so um, uh, welcome to my pitch. Um, today I'm going to be discussing um, my upcoming essay on um, to what extent is uh, New Hollywood actually new. Um, please appreciate the joke that I've made. So there's a lot of ways to approach this question. Um, there's a lot of people doing this question and everyone's taking a, a slightly different approach. Um, for me, I'm going to be looking at it uh, through the lens of masculinity in films. Um, mostly how men are portrayed, how um, the heroes of the films, the protagonists are portrayed, um, because there's a lot of significant differences between classical Hollywood um, protagonists, your Cary Grants, your Jimmy Stewart's, um, to your um, to your new Hollywood, um, you know, your Travis Bickles, your um, or your Scorsese gangsters. Um, essentially, they're completely different characters, and uh, I think that would be a really interesting topic to uh, look into. Uh, why masculinity? Uh, so, like I said, New Hollywood is well known for its portrayal of iconic male characters. Um, predominantly, um, there are these very moral figures, heroic, uh, heroic gentlemen. Um, they're usually very handsome men. Um, and uh, yeah, whereas you have the, the New Hollywood um, icons who of uh, just the exact opposite. They're, they're infamous for being alienated and twisted. Uh, they're flawed. They're usually violent. Um, I mean, essentially, we probably consider most of them to be incels by today's standards. Um, and yet they still seem to resonate with audiences. Uh, and that's for a variety of reasons, perhaps relatability, perhaps realism. Um, and um, and of course, but of course, the important thing to remember is they're the exact opposite in many ways to the classical Hollywood um, heroes that we got to know and love by the 1960s. So the key points I'm going to be going through in my um, introduction, in my uh, essay, is uh, of course the introduction of the uh, flawed protagonists in um, in in their um, uh, in, in film, so starting as early as films like Bonnie and Clyde, uh, where the men we were watching on screen were no longer men you aspired to, uh, or at least you weren't supposed to aspire to. Uh, and I will also be looking into the juxtaposition with the heroic classic Hollywood leading men. Um, of course, something that's important is toxic men did exist in classical Hollywood uh, long before uh, new Hollywood filmmakers came onto the scene. Um, but usually they were marginalized. Uh, a good example is uh, the searchers. Uh, John Wayne in a Western, he's, um, he doesn't get a happy ending or he doesn't get a traditionally happy ending. Um, he doesn't get a traditionally happy ending. The, um, the ending of the searchers is, of course, um, John Wayne walking out into the sunset away from the happy ending that's happening around him. And um, of course, something else that uh, I'll be needing to look into is um, how new are these characters in Hollywood? Um, so we have, their, they were new in Hollywood, but we also had uh, French New Wave uh, characters. Uh, I recently watched Breathless, that's a very good film. Uh, the protagonist is a very, very bad man. Uh, and in a lot of ways, he is a precursor to the new Hollywood uh, men and uh, and women uh, who were quite, quite flawed. Um, and then, of course, I'll be writing a conclusion. Uh, but what that conclusion will contain, I don't know yet. Um, so I've picked some films uh, that I'll be discussing and referencing. Um, these are subject to change, um, so I might talk about some of these less, I might talk about some of these a bit more. 
Um, whereas, um, so of course, it depends on my research. I might find a better film. Um, I might just stick to these ones. Uh, so predominantly, um, I'm looking at a bunch of films from uh, New Hollywood, uh, mainly Mean Streets, because um, that's an example of uh, a very flawed criminal man, um, even though his crimes aren't actually the center of the plot. Um, so I think I think he's a very interesting case study. Uh, it's also worth looking into his relationships with other men, uh, with his uh, his mistress as well. Um, another film I'll be looking at is Dirty Harry with Clint Eastwood. It's a personal favorite of mine, uh, who's well known for being an incredibly flawed um, policeman. Um, I, I, some might even say unethical policeman. Um, but again, the film gives you lots of reasons to get behind him and to support his cause. Um, so he's a very, he's not a black and white character. It's very, there's a lot of gray area involved. Um, I'll be looking at The Godfather. Um, actually, I'll be looking at the whole Godfather trilogy uh, because something I want to look at is um, how old Hollywood, uh, like I said earlier, it marginalizes, um, it marginalizes the uh, flawed characters of uh, their films. Um, whereas in New Hollywood, the flawed men tend to just continue existing. Uh, Michael Corleone spends three movies committing crimes and doing bad things. Um, and he just continues to be alive and to exist in the world and to be the center of the film. And um, the other example I'll be looking at is uh, Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver, um, who is essentially the epitome, really, of the deeply flawed, um, deeply flawed um, uh, incel kind of character who um, has no real relatability, but he is a good example of um, alienation and uh, just to the extent of which um, uh, some of these characters are alienated and how many of them just need help, really. Um, so those are the films I'll be discussing and I'd love to hear some more um, suggestions uh, from you guys. Um, I also need to be looking at films that don't support my, um, my theories. Um, so for example, I'll be looking at um, films like Breathless, which is a film not in New Hollywood that deals with um, very bad men. Um, and Marnie, as well, is um, a classical Hollywood film which um, which uh, has a, a very terrible man uh, as one of the leads who gets a happy ending. He does a lot of unforgivable things during this film. But it's just treated like, well, he's the good guy and he really isn't a good guy. And I'll be discussing um, how that film kind of um, it, it's some of the evidence against the point I'm trying to make. And also how um, why, why perhaps a film like that was so popular uh, in the uh, 40s, 50s and 60s. Um, I, I think it's very possible that. No one really saw uh, saw it as um, he uh, as Sean Connery was uh, such a bad guy, uh, because of course the times were different. Um, I also have here Public Enemy, which is an example of a, a bad man in classical Hollywood being punished, and The Searchers, which is um, a flawed man who doesn't get the happy ending. Um, I'm still compiling the books that um, I want to talk about. Um, so essentially, um, at the moment now, I'm d I've got two books. I'm going to add some more books over it uh, throughout the uh, Christmas holidays. I'm going to get lots of reading done. Um, but one book I want to look at um, to fo mostly to focus on the portrayal of men in classical Hollywood is a book called uh, Bringing Up Daddy, which is all about uh, masculinity in post-war Hollywood. So we have uh, basically all the men in um, the 40s, the 50s and uh, 60s um, and how they were portrayed and uh, how they were written. Um, and essentially what we were supposed, the lessons we were supposed to learn from these films. Um, 
Easy Riders for Aging Bulls is another book um, I'll be looking at by uh, Peter Biskind. Uh, that's much more for the new Hollywood uh, research. Um, there's lots in it about uh, specific films, um, like Taxi Driver, um, of course, Easy Riders. Um, and uh, I think uh, so far that's been quite useful in finding out um, a lot of the scholarly information available on um, um, on the men of New Hollywood and, and New Hollywood in general. Um, so far, I've also been reading one uh, scholastic article as well. This was the formation of most of my research for this uh, for this uh, essay, and that's uh, Masculinity in Crisis um, by Pam Cook. Um, and she writes about sort of um, Raging Bull, mostly, and uh, its portrayal of men um, and how men are lost in the portrayal of uh, men. It, it's changing in, in film. Um, so there's lots more reading to do. Um, I'd like uh, I'd like many more suggestions, but that's what I've got so far. And I think uh, I'm pretty confident in my um, in my essay. Uh, so I'm just hoping that the execution is uh, everything I hope it will be. Um, so I'd like to just take some time for uh, any questions or suggestions. Um, it's, it's less of a less question because I, 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 I did a question. Um, uh, are there any types of expectations of them? Yeah, absolutely, there are. Um, yeah, so um, there are a lot of characters who I will be touching upon who do subverse expectations. Um, I want to mention briefly, for example, uh, The Long Goodbye, um, because uh, the lead character in Nas is Marlowe, who isn't so much... Um, a bad man. He's um, he's seemingly quite a good man in a bad situation. Um, he, he's almost an everyman, if you will. And one of my personal theories, uh, although I won't be exploring it that much, is that um, he's uh, he was one of the early um, sort of uh, archetypes for the everyman in films. You know, people like the dude in um, in The Big Lebowski. Uh, you know, fairly decent guys who just get themselves in way over their head. And um, so, you know, there's there's him and as well as um, uh, Benjamin from The Graduate, who um, he's he's quite flawed, but he's not he's he's no Travis Bickle and he, or he's no Michael Corleone. He's no Henry Hill. Um, and I think he's worth mentioning because his relationship with uh, film is and society is very different to that of a lot of these uh, violent criminal men and I'll be talking about. So, um, yeah, there's lots of people that subvert expectations, definitely. Anyone else? Okay. Um, well, if you do have any questions, drop me an email and I'll, um, I'll be more than happy to uh, discuss it further with you. So uh, thanks so much for your time. And, um, and yeah, I'll uh, see you all soon.